Um, I'm here today with our latest guest of Fever TV. So welcome to Paresh Raja of Market Finance Solutions. Welcome. Thank you, Adam. Good to see you. You too. I've, I've been wanting to, to do this interview with you for quite a long time. So, so I'm really, really pleased that we've got, got here. It's not the same as sitting face to face together somewhere, but it, it's going to work anyway. So I'm sure it I'm sure it so let me begin then. Let me start. I mean, I know the story, but let, let's let our members know. How did MFS come to be such a well-known name in the UK short-term lending market? Uh, like, uh, that's it. Uh, Adam, we, as you know, we've been here for 15 years. Yeah. Started in 2006. Next year is going to be 15 years celebration. And... Uh, we, when I started this business, I looked at, uh, I used to be a broker, yes. doing a large SME transactions. Then I looked at my clients were struggling because banks were still taking two to three months in those days. And the deals were coming up and they would lose deals. So I thought, let me just set up a company which will lend to my clients. They can borrow and then see how it goes. And the model did work. And then I said, let me just concentrate rather than the brokerage. Let me concentrate on lending. This is where we are today. And I've been privileged to actually see this from when you were a broker, obviously, right through to where you are today. Um, but let's let's not focus on the exact moment, but let's talk about the last five years. I mean, the, the bridging market has grown over the last five years and you've you've played a part in that. So how do you think you've actually contributed to that growth, to that emergence? See. Uh, the position where we come from, we have seen uh, 2008 crash and we've seen the COVID. What experiences that has done is, as we kept on growing, we have seen uh, the bank's lending times have gone longer and longer. Mm -hmm. So what we have seen is that the new entrants coming in, people with small bridging companies coming in and trying to learn in the market space, which is which is a good thing because there was more competition in the market. And as we grew, we also we also saw that as MFS, we decided bridging did not have the best of the names as we started. Yeah, yeah. And so we helped, uh, we educated that market very constructively to see how we can help them. And in fact, clean up the, and make it a bit of better image for bridging. That's what we contributed towards. Then ambassadors like yourself who supported us within the industry to get where we are today. What the growth has done is because uh, the bank's transition time has changed now. If you want to get a commercial loan anywhere between the banks is anywhere between three to four months. Yes, yeah. The requirement of this new entrance was very easy and that's where the market is today. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, you have become sort of very much known as a reliable figure in, in the bridging market. Um, and we've been through various trials and tribulations, some of them we've already alluded to. So how do you think you've done that? Because we've already mentioned the financial crisis. We've seen things change. And obviously, we've seen a lot of change at the moment. So so how have you managed to do that through that period of time? See, that question is a quite a tricky question you're asking me right now. Let's take that into two levels. The first level is, look, being reliable. We are very straight. We have no hidden cost. We, we say what's on the tin, and if you say yes, we deliver in the market. See, for introducers and brokers, it's very fundamental that when a company offers them a decision in principle that they can back it up and yeah. they can lend, and that is what our reliability stands. Also, if you look at the example of COVID-19, COVID-19, when the close down happened, we were continuously lending within this market. Mm -hmm. All of my team has been working from their houses. They were lending. We had valuers who supported us, who went out and did valuations even to get the deals through. So there were a lot of good things that has happened within this. And then also, I could not do this be, uh, without the backing of my corporate funding lines, individual investors who had backed me up because they know I'm reliable. I can deliver what I say. So that's where we have come from. See? Mm. So that's our background. I think that that has become more and more important that that comfort, you know, being comfortable to have the funding lines in place and 
and, and that has let down certain people in the market. I mean, but you to have that comfort that you know that your investors are going to back you, whatever you do, is obviously a big, big strength. So what's next for MFS then? What, what are you going to do next? Next is I see the market is changing. There is going to be some big changes coming into the bridging market. Currently, as a MFS, we own single digits of the market share. Yes, you do. Yeah. Objective objective is to take it to double digits. Yeah. I don't know how bigger that double digit is, but uh, I will need a lot of support. I will need a support from the industry. I need support from my team and likes of yourself to see where we can take this to the next level. I think the market has definitely changed. Obviously, we've seen you know regulation creep. It's become a lot more professional as well. And that's encouraged more and more people into the space and hence the market's grown. So uh, probably the best way of putting it is, is the cake has grown. So if your slice of that cake grows as well, obviously it's all grown in proportion. And, uh, and I've seen that happen. And, and at the moment, you know, we've already discussed about the change of use, repurposing of buildings and, and the need for short term bridging finance has become more and more important as, as those properties are developed. But one of the things that always happens is What's the cost? You know, how much is this going to cost me um, to borrow money on a short term basis? And you and I, you've already alluded to it in the past. It was very expensive, but things have, have changed. So how do you approach the cost? What are your thoughts on the cost of short term lending? See, our rate starts anywhere between 0.59. Yeah. We lend up to 75 percent loan to value. Yeah. But again, we because we are a bespoke lender, we tailor make each of the every borrower. It all depends on the borrower's circumstances, their asset net worth, where the asset location is, and that's how we price our risk. And every lending we do is uh, tailor-made to those individuals. And hence, giving that edge and flexibility to our borrowers actually gives us an advantage of moving and penetrating into the market, in a wider market, shall I say. Yeah. I think that's important. I think that message, I want to make sure that we we put that message across is that you are tailoring every single solution to every single customer. It's not just this is our effectively our product range. You fit into that. If you don't fit into that, it doesn't work. And and I'm sure that that's helped. Correct me if I'm wrong, by the type of investors that you have, that they're happy to accept that tailoring from you. See, I have a I have uh, I have numerous funding lines and I have uh, I have individual investors and family offices backing up. So yeah. because of me having different buckets, it's, um, it gives me an advantage mm. to fit my borrows into one of those buckets. At any given time. And also what uh, the name says it all market financial solutions. Yeah, so we are giving that solution to people and that's what we are here for. So. Yeah, and it's been great to, to have seen it all happened over the last 15 years and to be, you know, to be not only a spectator, to be part of it and to see you grow. You know, it's really pleasing and, and you know that, that I think that anyway. So so really one of the things our audience just want to close on is always keen to to think or to understand what our partners think about the future, the, the future of the market, not just MFS. What do you think is going to happen to the bridging market over the next few years? I think the bridging market is linked with property. I. I believe there is a lot of volatility, volatility in the market space where people are wary about putting money into different asset class. Property is going to be the favorite asset class right mm -hmm. now. And with government backing up to build a lot of housing, conversions of offices, that is where the money is going to go. And interest rates being so low, yeah. I think I think all the all the individuals will start putting money into property and investing into property. And that's where I think it will go. As you see from times yesterday, July has been a record month. The uh, property sales were 37 billion. That is in last 10 years, it was one of the best months recorded. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can see, I can see that happening with Brexit around the corner. I think UK PLC is very, very well placed to get that investment that is needed in this part of the world, including our legal framework is so sound that it gives a lot of confidence to put people from abroad to invest money here. Mm -hmm. And I think property is going to have its uh, ups and downs, but I think it's the safest bet for people. Hence, 
banks will take slightly longer to lend, and I think bridging market will have a bigger space, which is what I call uh, alternative lenders will have a bigger space in this market space. I agree with you. I think I think you know all those combinations of things coming together will mean that we are in for in for some good times in the future. We just need to get through a very difficult time, which is difficult for for us and and people personally as well as in business. But you know, it's it's been great chat to. It's been a long time. I've been trying to pin you down to do this interview, so I'm really pleased that you're on the other end of uh, other end of the computer. I'd rather be sitting next to you doing it, but that's that's the times we're in anyway. So Paresh, thank you very much. That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you once again for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.